Hey, we're live as James Medic speaking, trainingsites.io, um, GPT-5, it's coming sooner rather than later from what the word on the street is. It's got some really cool features in it. The one I want to talk about today is going to, I think, replace or really minimize the need for prompt engineering. So if you're being told that you have to be a perfect prompt engineer in order to get the responses that you want, I think you should forget about it. I'm not saying forget prompting. I'm saying forget about becoming a perfect prompter or learning how to engineer all of these wild prompts in order to get the information and or the tasks that we want completed with all the cool new tools like GPT-5. So um, I'm going to go over one of the cool things that is out or supposed to be out, best guess, best knowledge, best research says is going to be available. And I'm pretty sure it is because I've seen bits of it in some of the other AI tools. So I'm pretty confident that it's going to be in GPT-5. What it is is multimodal input and multimodal output. And you may be going, well, what does that really mean to me when it comes to prompting? Uh, and here's the thing. When you are doing text prompts, think of it like this. You're stuck on a single lane highway. And the only way you can get to where you need going is text that you put into a prompt box and your ability to convey what it is that you want, what it is you want in return, all of the context around it. You're limited to the single lane highway. That is text prompting. And that's where you really need to focus on prompt engineering so you can be the most efficient with the words that you have. On the other hand, multimodal, which is now allowing GPT-5 to hear our voice and all of the nuances of our voice, the audio that's coming out, plus even see pictures and video and the audio that's in the video. This is all an additional thing, like a multi-lane highway. We're not limited to text now. We've got all of these other channels available to us and that changes the way that the AI tools can interact with us, but also understand what it is that we want, what we're asking them to do, whether that's some kind of response or completing a task like an AI agent will do. And I talked about in the first video that we're looking at this. So we got this old prompt engineering text, single lane highway. We've got multimodal input and output from GPT-5, super lane, multi-lane highway, on-ramps, exits, everything's available to us. And the reason that this is important, I did a lot of time when I was younger uh, as a speaker and as a sales trainer, I spent a whole bunch of time, I actually wrote a couple books and had courses on nonverbal uh, customer or nonverbal selling skills. And I picked this up from, uh, I guess he was a researcher, but he was talking about the, if you have 100% communication with someone in a sales situation, or any kind of way when you were interacting with another person, you have 100% of the communication would be optimal, right? But he was trying to break down and said, well, what, what part is, what's the communication? Where is it coming from? How do you communicate a message back and forth? And this, I, I believe his name, I don't want to butcher it, but it was, uh, let me pull it up just so that we can see it. And I'll go over the notes here. And again, I apologize. I'm going from memory on this one. I believe his name uh, was this one here, which is the Mahab brain or Mahab brain. Again, I apologize for butchering it. He was basically a researcher. And what he did is he did a whole bunch of studies and research on all of these communication skills and how the meaning of what it is that we're communicating got transferred to people. And he came up with this whole thing, which was the 73855 rule. And the first thing he did is he said, you know what? 7% of that 100% is the literal words that you use when you're communicating with someone. And I'm looking at this and I'm saying, hey, this is text prompting right now. I'm stuck at my computer. I have a text box. I have to type in words and that's it. And I have to try and make sure that this person, my digital assistant, my AI tool, my AI agent, understands from the literal words that I put in. 7% out of 100, which is really, really bad. Tiny, tiny percentage. The next thing he did is he said, you know what? If you really want to be able to communicate, you have to consider the audio, which is the 38%. So we're now at 45% as opposed to 7%. And there's we're on a pretty big highway now because there's all sorts of meaning 
in and around the audio portion of the communication that we have. And this is now available to us. Now, why is it important with AI? Because the context has always been the hardest part of prompt engineering. How do you get or imply the context in text only so that we can get the best communication back or the best result or response from the AI tool? Would you rather teach someone by just texting them information or would you rather have a conversation with them back and forth? You're treating an AI tool like text only. If you have these other communication levels available, why wouldn't you spend a whole bunch of time using those ones in addition to the text? So 7% is words, 38% uh, is audio, and then we now have 55% is nonverbal communication skills. And those are all the rapport skills about things, uh, for example, where you go, yes, that's the right answer, where you have different communication from your physical body as opposed to your verbal body and the text. So that is a pretty big 100%. 55%, that part that's nonverbal, I don't think it's there yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see it sooner rather than later. The one that's here for us now is that audio communication channel. And when I'm talking about that, there's some cool things about that because you have to remember there's no perfect prompt, right? doesn't matter how good you are at engineering a prompt. There's nothing that's going to be perfect about it. But your ability to be able to share your personal story, your passion and your experience with the auditory channel in addition to the text or the word channel, that is worth its weight and gold. And it's available to you with ChatGPT 5, which should be out hopefully this month and it's July 1st when I'm actually doing this. And these are things, for example, about the speed at which you talk, the breaks, the timing, the emphasis on words, the volume. I don't know if it does the volume yet, but all of these different nuances to the audio that's coming out, they all have meaning and intent. These are things about that uh, emotional emphasis, that part that makes us human, that makes us teaching very, very hard to put in text and convey it, even with a prompt engineering expert and being able to do it for each kind of content that you want. It's very, very difficult. That emphasis, again, allows us to really take advantage of who we are and what we want to be able to teach to the people that we're helping the transformations for, but providing the context that the AI tool, our new assistant, our digital assistant that we're giving tasks to it is far more likely to be able to understand what it is that we want if it has 45% of our intent and context as opposed to 7% only. And GPT-5 is doing this for us. So we've now got an emotional channel to it. We've got this context channel about it. And again, when I say context, think of if you have a level of unconfidence, uh, confidence about something or frustration or you have a personal framework or story that you want to share. Is it easier to talk about it in text or basically explain why you came up with the framework, how it worked, where you, where you actually use it, where you don't use it? Text, you can't do that. Very, very hard to do. So that emphasis that isn't there before, it allows us to speed up the time it takes to actually create the responses and task actions that we need. And it's a lot more fun and a lot more exciting. Um, when you think of a text prompt too, and here's the other thing that's awfully hard about text prompts, and I want you to just think about that. Think about this. Next time you are going to do a prompt and you're thinking about, okay, I want to do a text prompt. If you're going and you look at that and you say, uh, okay, I want to do a prompt about this. Most people are visual thinkers. So what you do is you see a picture of what you want you're trying to convert it to text to put into a text box. Maybe you're auditory, you talk to yourself, you're having a conversation, but then you have to convert it into text. That takes time, energy, effort, and it's stuff gets lost in translation from visual to auditory to written text. Speaking off the top of the cuff, on the fly, meandering around different areas is absolute open fields for you to share your feelings and your authenticity about what it is that you're doing. So you don't have to worry about grammar. You don't have to worry about messy kind of text prompts. You don't have to focus on the perfect prompt 
and get that prompt anxiety about is this the one that's going to work or not going to work. You don't have to start over all of the time. Things can be super messy. It allows you to have your teacher voice on, right? That one where you do show your passion, your excitement for something, it is there for you. And I think of it this way as well. If you were going to teach someone something, would you want to teach them by texting or would you want to pick up the phone and talk to them and or show videos or pictures and have a narrated? What do you think? Yet, yeah, why are you teaching, treating AI with a text only when you can now do all of these other things? I'm old enough when I see kids actually using their phones, it's like, why are you texting back and forth 48 times? Pick up the damn phone and talk to the person. We're there. That's what it is that we can talk about. So, you know, that's kind of cool stuff. I want to show you an example of how this looks in real life. If you're thinking about, hey, I'm a teacher, I'm a coach, I'm a consultant. How does this actually work? if I want to do something like create a course. And again, all of these materials and stuff that I have available here for you, all of the prompts and things that I'm going to show you, they're all available at trainingsites.io forward slash join. There we go. Uh, that is my personally branded campus, my community that's free for you to join. Everything is there. And I'd love to see you in there to be able to share all of this cool stuff that I've been putting together. But if you are a coach, consultant, a speaker, and you're thinking, man, I want to put a really good course together. How can we actually do that? What would we look like? Uh, I did one for teachers. I'll show you the one for coaches. And just I want you to kind of think of this as we're going through it. This is a prompt that I put together just to give an example of, of how it would work. But if you are focusing on the old school text prompt and you were trying to figure out and prompt engineer put something together that was absolutely perfect, first of all, even if you do have a template, how long would it take you to get a complex prompt put together to build a course and all of the stuff that you want there. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, how many edits, all sorts of stuff. You know, if I go take a look at one, and again, this is not, I have a whole bunch of prompts at trainingsites.io about frameworks or formatting your inquiry or interaction with it. Again, they're free for you there. I'm not talking about, you know, that part. I'm talking about having to use a specific way to prompt or engineer prompts in different situations and figure that out. I just did one for a course here and it's basically having to write this out in text, right? I need you to create, or you're a course expert if you're gonna use any of those, you know, act as if kind of prompting styles. But basically it's create a comprehensive online course and materials for my coaching business. The course should teach my this. And basically, you have to put together, and again, I have these ones. You can take a look on the screen here. Course structure requirements. I want six to eight modules that follow my uh, five-step process. Here's the process. Each module should have these number of lessons, eight to 12 minutes each. Clear outcomes, self-paced delivery over four to six weeks. The type of content that I want, basically where my notes are, all of this additional stuff to use on it. The, how to position the framework, how to create marketing materials, really say, hey, this is my intellectual property. I want to be able to protect it. Student engagement, you get the idea there. We've got an absolutely huge prompt that is specifically engineered to get a course and the marketing materials put together, at least the framework and the syllabus for it. So if you look at that, how fast will that be and what do you get out of it? Now think about GPT-5 and let's look at it from a little bit of a different perspective. Now remember, I'm having a conversation auditorily and I'm using the additional 38% of things like the emphasis, the speed at which I'm actually communicating things, the way that I have long pauses or short pauses. These are all additional communication uh, pieces that are available to GPT-5 that aren't there in text. So again, I just put this one together, for example. Um, you know, the text one, there's no emotional content right there. There's nothing about how passionate are you about it. It's not there. You have to try and make it authentic, but it's far more authentic if you're talking about it in a natural conversation. And it's like, you know, you just, I, I notice this. I always, uh, when I'm talking to GPT, I say thank you sometimes. I say, hey, how are you doing today? It's not, it doesn't do anything and it doesn't say goodbye, but it is our assistant. It's someone that works for us and we have unlimited assistants that can do unlimited tasks 
So our context and our ability to communicate uh, on multiple channels allows it to understand better what it is that we want and do better work for us, which is at the end of the day, uh, the important part. So if I go, hey, ChatGPT, I'm ready to finally turn my signature framework into a proper online course. And I'm really excited because I've been developing and refining this with all of my clients over the past eight years. So here's the deal. I have this framework. It's called the Confidence Call uh, Catalyst Method. Uh, it's a five-step thing that I put together as I did trial and error, and I tried these other things, and I used it in my practice, so I tried it with clients. You get the story, this is how it works. So the thing is, I've got this all ready, I've got my framework together, and I've collected a whole bunch of content that I have. I have some additional third-party content from TED Talks, I've got recordings of my calls, I've got additional documents, all of that stuff is here to help you or based on it. And these are the ones that I think you should focus on because they cover this in this particular part of my framework. So I got all of this available for you and it's there to work on. So what I want you to do is I want you to work on a premium course and I'm thinking four to $500 would be a good price. And I want you to be able, or I wanna be able to teach this framework that I've created with the content that I've created and uh, I want to make sure that it comes across in a way that helps the people that I'm trying to help. And those people are, explain where they came from, the kind of people that take the course, the people that you help, have the conversation. You also see something along the lines of, hey, this is my framework and I'm really serious about making sure that this comes across and it is as protected as it can be or at least inform the people that are taking it that this is mine and it is content that is unique to me and unique to my particular process. You might just say, hey, I've got six modules that are here, six modules there. I wanna be known as the authority on this particular thing. I just don't want it regurgitated content. Okay, so can you map me out the structure for this and actually work with it by verbalizing it? Things about your confidence in it, the part that you're wanting, where it came up from, that has nothing to do now with writing a big engineered prompt. Are you going to get a better response when you have 45% of the communication and the context of it put together? Absolutely. That origin story, the content context, this is all now available and unique to you and it wasn't unique before if you were just giving a prompt. The teaching philosophy, the IP concerns, the content integration. Can you go and say, yeah, I want to be able to have eight lessons for this particular thing. But you could say, hey, put it together. Here's the stuff and get it back. And you are the human in the loop again. GPT-5 is something that we're going to have to learn how to use because our ability to add context over and above content to clarify all of the overwhelm that's in the content. Our context, our ability to communicate content, context is now at 45% if you get into being auditorily or using those nuanced auditory communication levels as opposed to just text. So next time you're thinking about, hey, I want to make sure I get a great response. I want to be able to communicate to my uh, assistant, my staff, what it is that I want them to do. Am I going to text them or am I going to tell them and share why it is that I want them to do the things that they I want them to do, why I want them to do it, why I came up with it so that they're on the same playing field with me and they get the big picture. Remember, when we all talk about stuff, we try and use words to paint a picture. You can paint a picture with text only. But if you add the auditory channel, that picture becomes much more vivid and much more clear for everyone that you're trying to communicate. And that is also ChatGPT5. So hope you enjoyed this. Again, my name is James Maduke, uh, trainingsites.io forward slash join. Love to have you there. If you haven't already, like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be back tomorrow with some more great information on to help you start, build, and grow your education business. Take care. Expect the best.